Every organization has a story. I, it always kind of cracks me up when people say, a story? Well, you know, we don't have a story. That's, that's a real danger sign. In somebody's organization, especially at the leadership level, says, well, we don't have a story. My answer is, well, you do have a story. The problem is it's not being told by you. It's being told by other people. You can go into your organization and get your story from your employees. They'll tell you one version of it. Your competitors are out there in the market telling another version of it. You know, people who've never heard of you are sort of telling your story by your absence in the stories they tell. So our premise is you do have a story. It's better to have an intentional story that's constructed by you to do the work you want to go do in the world. So what we find is when you apply these basic story making tenets, you get results. If you get your story right, you can cut through the noise and you can reach people and you can engage them and you can keep them. The information will go in deeper. Why? Because it's already in the native tongue of the brain. They will retain it longer. They will recall it better. And the most important thing about stories is that people steal them. It's the best thing about them. This is the internet model, not the Hollywood model. You know, please steal this story is what you want to have happen. If I'm sitting next to you, speaking of travel, at LaGuardia, and there was one cloud over Bermuda, and they shut down the entire East Coast Flyway, which they always do. You know, and we're going to be stuck in that same bar together for a few hours. I'm trying to get back to Florida. You're trying to get back to Atlanta. If I say to you, hey, I just, uh, you know, we're just sitting here. I wanted to kind of run through this spreadsheet with you. You're going to immediately feign that you don't speak English. You know, you'd rather have your, you know, again, have your teeth drilled. If I say... So anyway, there I was in this hotel this morning, and a bear walked in the lobby. You wouldn't believe it. And if I can hook you, you're going to listen. You're going to go, cool. And if I really get you when you go home, you're going to tell the bear story, only you're not going to tell anybody I told you. It's going to be your bear story. By the way, all stories are true. They're all true, as long as the telling lasts. They're all true. The fellow who is the, really the spiritual father of Walt Disney Imaginary is a guy named Marty Sklar. And Marty was a pretty fearsome guy, to me, anyway. And it was buy-off day. I don't know what your equivalent of that is here, but I'm sure you have one. There, that's the one where the man's come and say, we either are going to make this or we're not going to make this. So it's, it's your day to, to get it proven, proof of concept. So Marty and his retinue came over, a couple guys, and said, Look, let's see your show. So we put it through its paces, made it do. And Marty's kind of hunkered over. He doesn't stand real tall. He's kind of like this. And he's not effusive at all, complete poker face. And he looks up at the end and says, Mm. No, nope. keep at it. You know, shuffles on off to some other gig. And we were just devastated. It's just crestfallen. You know, absolutely. We've been working for months on this thing, and in one word, it's like no. So we immediately left about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and went and got medicine. Because <laughs> we didn't feel very good. We were kind of sick. So we had a few medicines. and. Uh, then went back to work, went back to Walt Disney Imagineering over in Glendale that night to get the team back together and say, well, how do we, you know, how do we pick something up out of the ashes here? And Marty was still there, and we were vociferously um, in our medicated state denouncing all the unfairness of life. <laughs> and he dropped by and he said, look, when I say no or when I make a comment like that, I am not saying, no, that's a bad idea at all. That was a great idea. That was a great show. It's just not the right show for what we're doing. I want you to go back and make the right show for what we're doing. If I thought you were stupid, I'd fire you. I wouldn't say, no, go do it again. I'd just let you go, because I would think you couldn't do it. I know you can do it. By the way, that's a fabulous idea. Put it someplace where you know where it is, because we will use it. And it was a really nice aha. Plus, we felt better. But don't ever throw away anything. You're in the innovation business. The dumbest, off-target, wackiest, notional, never going to go anywhere thing you do should go someplace special because that dog is going to get recycled. One of these days, the application is going to surface, and you're going to go, holy crap, where's that thing Dave did last year? Look at this. And you're going to whip that dude out, and it's going to be right spot on. So never throw anything away. Stories take a little courage. You are creating reality for people when you tell stories. And when you become conscious that you're always telling them, and you always are, it can make you a little shy of, of telling them, because you realize that, I'll be darned, audiences go around believing my stories. So, you need to be courageous and know that you're telling them and commit to them when you tell them. And don't stop halfway through because you suddenly realize where you're going. Once you commit, you've got to go there. Details, more important than facts. Um, and while I'm on that topic, passion is more important than competency. Too much has been made of competency, I think.
Get your story populated with detail, and if you don't know the facts, for goodness sake, make them up. <laughs> you know? But don't leave me with gaps and say, oh, I can't really tell you what that looks like because I haven't done enough studies yet. You know, my wife's an industrial engineer from Stanford, and that's why we don't have any furniture. Because Pam can't get enough data points to analyze what kind we should have. So we just don't have any. 